Today I'm going to show you how to take a colored image and convert it to black and white with sort of a vintage, moody sort of tone to it. First thing I do is I open up the original image in Camera Raw on Photoshop and I make just a few basic adjustments. I'll toggle up my exposure just a little bit. My temperature just to make it a little bit warm. Clarity make sure the details are all really sharp. Then I'm also going to toggle up my blacks just a little bit since I am converting it to black and white and I want a, a nice contrast between the light and dark. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit open image. Once it's open, I create an adjustment layer, which is down here, this little half black, half white circle. I go up and I select curves, and I pull my curves up just a little bit. That makes it just a little bit brighter than it already is. And at this point, if you wanted to do some facial corrections, you could add Create a New Layer and hit Command-Shift-Alt-E. That merges the layers up and you can work in this layer to do any facial uh, corrections or any retouching that you wanted to do. I'm not going to worry about that right now so I'm going to delete this layer and I am going to take another adjustment layer select curves I'm going to go up to where it says RGB and hit the button and then I'm going to select the blue and down in the left hand corner I'm going to pull it up See the picture gets sort of a bluish hue. And then in the opposite corner, I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. And this will create a more yellow, kind of vintage look to the shot. A little bit more like it was taken with film. Once I do that, I'm going to make another adjustment layer. And I'm going to select black and white. And at this point, you're just going to want to play around with the different colors until you get the tone that you want. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to go through each of them and play with them and make my picture look the way that I want it to. These different tones are all going to vary depending on your original picture. So I can't really give you an exact number or um, formula for the right coloring you want for your image because it's going to depend on your lighting and the colors you already have in your original. But after you've got this the way you want it, after you've played with the different colors, you can go to tint, select the square, and then I give it sort of a grayish tint. And you can play around with different colors if you want as well and that will Create, uh, affect the overall tone of the picture. Once I have the tone that I want, I hit OK. And you can look here, if you do like this gray tint, you could use that in your image as well. Hit OK. And once that's finished, I'm going to add another adjustment layer. I'm going to hit Exposure. And I'm going to toggle up the offset, which is going to create kind of a hazy look to the picture. Right about there. Finally, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make sure that the elliptical marquee is selected. If there's a square there, you just right click and you can select the shape that you want. And then draw an oval with your marquee, making sure that the subject of your shot is in the middle of the frame. And then on a Mac, I'm going to hit Command Shift I, which selects the inverse. Um, if you don't know the command for that on your computer, you can come up here and hit select and hit inverse there. We'll do the same thing. Then add another adjustment layer, curves, and pull it down from the middle right here. And this is going to create a nice vignette, and obviously we don't want this contrast between light and dark. So go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, 
can make sure that it's toggled up to the full amount and that's going to blend that light and dark together. If it's too dark you can always change the opacity here for the layer. Once that's finished you make sure all your layers are selected right click merge layers it's going to take forever because I'm running quick time in Photoshop uh, and then you save your image and you're finished hope that helps thanks